Hi everyone, my name is Valerie and I'm a psychology major from UCLA. I'm going to be talking to you about reducing carryover effects in within subjects designs. My faculty advisor is Dr. Amanda K. Montoya, part of the Quantitative Research Collaboratory. So in psychological research and other substantive fields, there are often within subjects designs and between subjects designs. In within subjects designs, each participant is in every experimental condition. We don't split people off into different conditions, they just go through all of them. This leads to an increase in statistical power due to more of the variation being able to be attributed to the person themselves and decreased sample size because again, they're just going through every condition. You're not getting different people to do different conditions. However, a downside to within subjects designs is the presence of carryover effects. Carryover effects are anything that is being measured by the scale that is not what you intend it to be measured. So for example, it could be practice effects where an individual has seen the questions or items more than once and is just remembering their previous responses. So ideally, we would want to reduce these effects, but keep the good attributes of within subjects designs. So we propose administering separate randomized halves of scales so that participants never see the same items more than once. So, and then we're avoiding presentation order as a covariate. We used a secondary data set, so it was one study with two different implementations. The traditional one, implementation one, is when each person would get each 10 items of the scale. For implementation two, we randomly split it so that someone would have data for a randomized half. So in the graphic, for example, they would have a response for item one, in the wave one or pretest, but not in the second version. And so we would randomize that for each participant. We used McDonald's Omega. So in psychological scales, there is a construct of reliability. So how reliable is your scale when the same person takes it multiple times or different people in different populations? So for example, when you took the SAT, at least for myself, my score did not change that much. And that's good. It, it's showing that the scale is measuring what it should be measuring, not something extraneous. We also looked at individual item difficulties with item characteristic curves. So item characteristic curves basically tell you what a good or bad item is. So a good item can give you a lot of information under the curve as we see in this graphic, and a bad item is flatter, close to like a zero slope. It's not really telling you that much about the item or question. So how are we observing carryover effect using this? So we believe that an increased item reliability between the first and second administrations of the scale indicates an increase in carryover effects. So the reason for this being that how would an item suddenly become more reliable, right? It has to be measuring something else, such as carryover, that is driving these results. We predict that a within-subject study implementing a scale with randomized split halves will have reduced carryover effects as opposed to a traditional within-subject study where everyone sees the same items at each administration. So these are the item information curves, or the item characteristic curves in this case. So study one is on the left, and again, that's a traditional one. In the second administration, the curves that go down, and that's indicating that they're less reliable. In study two, we see the same trend. However, as we'll see on the next slide, the numbers paint a little more of a clear picture than just these graphics. So if we look at the table for the part that's in red, for implementation one, we started with 0.81 reliability for both scales, right? The traditional one and the randomized split halves, and we ended with the same thing, 
overall. However, in wave one, they both start at 0.81, but for wave two, for the traditional one, reliability actually increases, and we believe that indicates carryover. Therefore, looking at the results, we believe that the implementation of the within subject design with randomized split halves did reduce carryover as opposed to the traditional implementation. Thank you again to Dr. Amanda Montoya, the QRC lab, props, and everyone who has supported me with this research project.